Hello, can um, we see you? I'm, I'm here. I'm here sorting through hi. documents at hi. <laughs> and, and I appreciate the invitation. It's around six o'clock in the morning here. Sorry. Um, uh, and, and I'm glad to be here. Now, I, I, have, I have materials that I've been fighting with over the last 10 minutes, but I only have seven uh, minutes. So um, I'm going to I'm gonna have to wing this, Just talk uh, to at, us. this at this point. Um, I do, I do want to touch on some of it. Um, uh, that, that, that I, I, I piece together. Um, my background is uh, basically science, technology, and society. Um, in 1994 at Penn State, I saw an exhibit of the Mosaic browser, and I began um, uh, exploring that and building web pages. And in 1995, I started research on internet addiction and dependency, and I published it as an undergrad in the Penn State McNair Journal uh, in 1996. Um, so I'm all about, my background is media. I was a broadcaster uh, and a journalist for 10 years. And um, I, I bring that to the table that uh, I'm, I'm basically looking at media, science, technology, and society. Now I've studied internet phenomena uh, since the time of the internet addiction and dependency. I revived it in uh, 2011 uh, some of the concepts moving more into dependency and, and the, the society we've created of, of various literacies, I, I spoke in Morocco on it, on various literacies that society has moved into. Uh, in, I use terms like the illiterate, the exliterate, the person who wants to stay off the grid, the illiterate, uh, the highly sophisticated, the programmer, the people who are building our world behind the scenes. Um, which may be some of you. Um, I, I personally uh, uh, as, uh, have been involved uh, from the, the media uh, uh, standpoint, I would say, of, of the interface. Um, so so I'm, I'm largely, that began with, of course, the browser, the Mosaic browser, and um, moving into um, areas um, that uh, uh, we, we can explore um, uh, today, like the brain machine interface. Now I've, I've edited uh, three books. In 2014, I edited Global Issues and Ethical Considerations in Human Enhancement Technologies. In 2018, I edited Androids, Cyborgs and Robots in Contemporary Culture and Society. And in 2021, I edited Machine Law, Ethics and Morality in the Age of Artificial Intelligence. Um, with that said, I have, I have concerns and I'm probably the Debbie Downer of the, con of the conference um, in the sense that um, I, while we, we have, I'm with the internet, I've been teaching online, I've taught online courses for multiple universities, I've, I've 10 years with the same school now, University of Maryland, and um, am I still on? Yeah. Okay. So, um, so I, I'm going to pop something up for you on the, if I can share my screen, I'm going to pop something up for you, which are just ideas based on interfacing moving into the future. And, and some of it will come out of what was my dissertation in 2010. Um, and that dissertation um, uh, had to do with, um, the title was Rhetorics of Iconics, Terrorism, media informatics, autopoiesis, and agency in cyberspace. And it sounds like a mouthful, but basically what I what I contended in that dissertation was that images, terrorism images on their own, had their own power. They were they were grabbing our attention, but collectively there was a gestalt forming. So and I believe through that gestalt, it moved into, and this is in the dissertation, it moved into realms of artificial intelligence. Google at the time, I think, was concerned about um, uh, uh, their AI finding cats that they had, uh, they had not programmed it to find. It was identifying uh, cats in, as graphics. So, so there's this question of, of the internet and whether or not um, it ever will come to some form of of sentience, for lack of a better word, uh, a, a creature, a being, a beast. 
something that we have to contend with that uh, we don't have any control over. So with that, I'm going to, if, if I have a few minutes left, I'm going to look at, I have five future uh, interface issues. I'd like to bring them up. And um, they're a little bit, they're rough, they're very rough. Um, but what they do is they, um, uh, they start with, uh, actually it was interesting that you, how much Elon Musk came up because he's the start of everything I have to say here. And uh, at least at the start of it, because what's happening in the media, I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, what's happening in the media is that there's no discussion of this, but what he did was he purchased the databases for 400 million voices in the world, including powerful world leaders, high profile executives, celebrities, influencers, that should be, and the bewildered herd, putting them like toys all under the control, influence, and unregulated powers of the richest man in the world, who actually is heavily invested in linking brains and machines as a serious plaything. Um, I think that communications inter interface um, of social media, but of, of the control of the communication interface has always been um, at the forefront of web technologies. Browser wars went on for years. Uh, I do think this, this thing he did with Twitter, uh, which is not talked about, is the database. He, he owns the people in the database now. And we're seeing, we're seeing people play with war. Uh, people play with people in wars, taking territories. This is a different territory this man moved into. And what he do with, does with it is fine. Whether or not he's, it's gonna be more free speech is really questionable. Uh, I don't think he gives a damn about an edit button, uh, an edit option for Twitter. I, I left Twitter recently. Um, uh, but the second thing I'm, I wanted to talk about was uh, the movement of the, I'm, I'm, my, my concerns are moving the internet into the bot. So the BMI, the, the brain machine interface, is, has ethical concerns for me, of course. Um, we'll, we'll, I, I use the credit card here as an example of how it will be a convenience um, to go from uh, credit cards. Initially, we slid them, then we inserted them. Now we're tapping them. We'll soon be touching them, but we won't be touching them, I believe, with physical cards. I believe, uh, you know, MIT, I believe, developed the invisible tattoo, which has the code in it to, um, to be read as a chip. Um, I don't know the physics of that. Some of you, will, some of you would. Um, I do see a future where we see a, we see emerging, for whatever reason, of Google, Amazon, and PayPal into an online interface for commerce, and it will have to be used somehow. Maybe everybody doing small business will fall under that umbrella, but that will be the primary interface. And I'm not a fan of social media. I do see it as a circus maximus, um, a place where uh, there's, there's no trial. It's, it's instant justice of the majority right or wrong. And my final comment here has to do with the convergence creation of in, emerging internet technologies converging into a virtual electronic behemoth, an evolutionary creation of cyber gestalt, a collective internet presence sentience with agency that's before we add any hive to it, uh, greater than its parts. And we'll see some of, there was just a report last week on molecular robots uh, swarms are, are gestalting uh, and, and, and becoming more powerful than their individual parts. So I have a few notes, which may be a little disconcerting uh, and it's already been brought up. At some point in time, the internet cannot or will not allow itself to be turned off. There's nothing we can do to stop what's coming. We can only strive to assuage its impact and for what may be called necessary reasons tied to perceived safety, comfort, and security, people will agree to permanently interface with the internet appliance in body, soul, and spirit. So I'm just putting that Dave, on the 